Good afternoon to everyone tuning in from the Southwest Pacific. This is another Cyclone Evan update from 28storms.com slash cyclone. Over the past hour, we have received another updated forecast from the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center. And to start off their advisory, you can see that maximum sustained winds are still 100 knots, making Cyclone Evan a formidable cyclone. It is really not weakened all that much, and in fact, they are still forecasting more in the way of intensification with a peak intensity of 110 knots as the storm begins to turn a little bit more toward the southwest. The latest track shows the storm moving fairly close to the northern and western coasts of Fiji, and although the track has shifted slightly toward the west compared to some of the more recent tracks in the extended range, this forecast would still be close enough or it would place the storm close enough for interest there to still feel some potentially significant impacts from the storm. More important than anything, you do not want to focus on the track or the line itself. You want to look at the margin of error. So the storm can deviate a little to the east or to the west of the forecast positions that you see on this map. Therefore, all interests across Fiji should be bracing for a direct landfall in the event that the track shifts a little to the east. And there is also the window of opportunity for the storm to deviate a little bit to the west and impact some of the residents along the southern coast or southern islands of Vanuatu. As we turn to the visible satellite animation, you can see that the outflow associated with the storm still appears to be very healthy, and the outflow is a good sign that the vertical wind shear values are marginal at best, so the upper level winds are favorable for the storm to at least maintain its intensity, if not strengthen a little bit more as it continues to move southwest and away from Samoa. Now one feature in this satellite imagery that you may not notice is the eye, but the eye is certainly there as we turn to the latest microwave satellite composite and you can see that the storm is undergoing some slight structural changes and this is fairly common in some of your stronger storms and also some very slight vertical wind shear could also be playing a role but there are signs that the upper level conditions could improve even a little bit more than what they currently are so it looks as though the JTWC forecast of at least slight additional strengthening is valid. As has been the case all along, this tropical cyclone is located over some very warm water temperatures and those warm waters are allowing the thunderstorm activity to continue to fire near the center of circulation and the enhanced infrared shows some of the colder cloud tops which are associated with the storms that rise up the highest up in the atmosphere and that's another indicator that these storms are fairly intense and we're looking at a fairly healthy storm. If we take a more regional view using water vapor imagery, you can see the entire storm as a whole. And if there is anything to gripe about in terms of the structure of the storm, you can see that the southeast quadrant is a little bit restricted in terms of the outflow. As you can see across the northern semicircle and the southwest quad, there doesn't appear to be any restriction of the outflow. But this restriction here over Samoa is an indicator that we are dealing with some very weak east-southeast vertical wind shear. And as we turn to the latest wind shear analysis from the University of Wisconsin, some of the lighter vertical wind shear values are currently located to the south-southeast of the storm, and that is where an upper-level anticyclone is positioned. But as you can see, the anticyclone is not currently co-located with the tropical cyclone. It's displaced a little bit toward the south, and the clockwise flow around that anticyclone is helping to induce a little bit of easterly vertical wind shear. However, there is a reasonable possibility that the upper-level anticyclone will start to trend closer to the tropical cyclone over the next two to two and a half days. And this is pretty much what the GFS model is indicating. And what you're looking at is a forecast of those streamlines in the upper levels. We were just now looking at the wind shear analysis for this current time. And you can see the upper-level ridge being indicated by the GFS as well, currently situated just to the east of Fiji, which is right here. But as we set this animation into motion over the next 48 to 72 hours, you can see that the ridge is starting to move a little bit more toward the west. And as you recall, the GFS has been showing the storm near Fiji for the past several runs within 60 to 72 hours. And this is also the general position as to where it has the upper level anticyclone. So once again, just to sum things up, conditions do appear to be favorable for this storm to maintain or strengthen for the next two to three days. The water vapor imagery can also tell us more as to what the steering patterns are looking like. And we're still dealing with this very strong trough in the mid to upper levels that is draped all the way from the Solomon Islands southward through New Caledonia. And the overall thinking amongst several forecasters of the South Pacific, including those at the Fiji Meteorological Service 
and the Joint Typhoon Warning Center is that this trough is eventually going to interact with the tropical cyclone as it continues westward, and the trough will then shunt it more toward the southeast. However, there are still some major differences in the forecast model guidance. The GFS is still taking the storm almost directly over Fiji, whereas the European ECMWF model is a little bit more toward the west and we are going to talk more about those models in just a second but also this is just a quick plot summarizing what some of the other model members are showing one of these is the GFS and you can see that it has the track going directly over Fiji but we have seen a slight shift toward the west within the past 12 hours and now we're starting to see more models come in line with the overall ECMWF idea that we also talked about in the previous video so here we are looking at the GFS mid-level steering forecast valid as of 24 hours out and you can see the tropical cyclone just now beginning to move into the picture by 48 hours it's continuing to move west-southwest it's now starting to make some rather significant weather out across Fiji it's just to the north of some of the more populated areas we can see anomalous ridging here just to the south of the storm and that is what is going to continue driving it toward the west-southwest for at least another 24 to 36 hours but we can also see the trough still hanging tough out across the Coral Sea to the south of New Caledonia and apparently the GFS is starting to break down the ridge as we go into the 72 hour time frame and that allows the storm to turn more toward the south a little more quickly and by day 4 through 6 you can see the storm continuing to push toward the south after directly making landfall across the islands. Also just for anyone that is curious this is now a zoomed in look at the GFS this is the 69 hour forecast valid at 12Z on the 14th of December. This is when the storm is forecast to be directly over Fiji and you can see that this would still be a very powerful cyclone if you are to believe this forecast solution. However there is a slightly different alternative and it has been one that we have been favoring for the past 12 to 24 hours and it's also being advertised by the latest 12Z run of the European ECMWF model. You see Tropical Cyclone Evan starting to move in as we go into 24 and 48 hours and within the next 48 hours there really is not all that much of a difference between the GFS and ECMWF solutions. However as we go into day 3 you can see that the storm is moving just to the west of Fiji not by a whole lot so the room for error here is not that great at all and as we go into day 4 and day 5 instead of quickly pushing toward the south like we just saw with the GFS the trough over the Coral Sea does not fully capture the storm therefore the cyclone is left to meander around the southwest Pacific in very close proximity to Vanuatu through 144 hours or the next six days and as we go into day 7 through 9 keep in mind that this is a very extended forecast and you can't expect the model to verify 100 percent this far out but the trough is now fully gone and instead we will start to see more in the way of ridging near Fiji which will if anything allow the remnants of Cyclone Evan to push into the Coral Sea but once again this is just simply to reiterate the possibility that the trough could leave the storm behind also just to go even more in depth this is the 48 hour ECMWF 500 hectopascal steering layer forecast and you can see all the main parameters that we've already discussed here's the trough still there and here's the ridge but the big difference between the GFS and the ECMWF is the handling of the intensity of this ridge and all too often for the past several months the tendency with the GFS has been to weaken the strength of these ridges too quickly and therefore it shows the trough picking up the storm a little sooner than it probably should and that is the main reason why we are leaning toward the ECMWF solution with the track a little bit more toward the west of Fiji. However, once again, I must reiterate, please prepare now in Fiji in the event that the storm does directly track over you. You are still easily well within the cone of error. Now as we go deeper out into the five-day forecast, once again, with the European, the trough has now lifted out by this time. You no longer see that amplified pattern out across the Coral Sea, and that is why the European model is not showing the storm continuing to move toward the south, because the trough just isn't there anymore to force it in that direction. As a matter of fact, by day nine, we're actually starting to see more in the way of ridging take shape out across the southwest Pacific, as advertised by this 582 decameter line beginning to bulge more toward the north again that's your first sign of more ridging starting to take shape out here and that is the reason why the storm motion is going to be from east to west with that clockwise flow around the ridge pushing the storm or what's left of it into the coral sea so that's all for now in terms of the analysis 
Bottom line is interest down there in Fiji and southern Vanuatu should be prepping in the event that the storm begins to move very close to you. And for interest out there in Fiji, like I said, I think the storm or the center of the storm is going to stay just to your west. But even if that solution verifies, you could still be in for some nasty weather on the southeast quadrant of the storm. So either way, you need to be taking those precautions now. So go ahead and bookmark 28storms.com slash cyclone. You can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash 28storms. And also finally on Twitter, our handle is twitter.com slash 28storms. So thank you once again for following our content. If there's anyone that you know of in the Southwest Pacific that could be impacted by this storm and they are seeking more weather information, you can tell them about us. We are not an official source. The Fiji Meteorological Service is the primary source of tropical cyclone information for that region, but we are here to supplement the official products and give more detail and analysis explaining why the forecast is showing what it is. So thank you again and keep it tuned for more updates.